all been zooming long enough. We hope it works the way we hope it works. All right, so it's, uh, we are live streaming now on Facebook. Welcome to The Word is Right. Tonight, we have an epic feature. We have the poet Rose Gold in the house. Yo, oh my God. If you were not here at the New Mexico Poetry Summit uh, a couple weekends ago, you missed out on meeting this woman in person. But I bringing to you, you I'm bringing her to you uh, uh, virtually. So if you were not able to be here, at least you can uh, experience this woman uh, virtually. She is my Tesoro sister. If you're not familiar with the Tesoro group of women, go to firesingers.com as I welcome our brave and fearless leader, Stacey Dyson, into the room. Uh, Firesingers.com is the website for the Tesoro Group. We are a worldwide women's organization of poets, professionals, publishers, writers, authors, uh, miscreants, no, just me. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, we do amazing work within our communities. And so uh, if you did not have a chance to see Rose Gold perform or meet her in person here in Albuquerque a couple weekends ago, you can absolutely uh, get to see her perform tonight. All right. Uh, the open mic list is, is very small. So if anyone who is in the house would like to read who is not on the open mic list, please uh, let me know. The, uh, the Chromebook in which I am seeing the chat and viewing the chat, uh, it's really weird how it kind of skips back and forth in the chat. So if I tend to miss you or I don't get your name on the chat, uh, from the chat onto my list, uh, either DM me directly because it puts a nice red uh, message, which helps people like me see the things that I miss. Uh, otherwise, um, just uh, feel free to just let me know. And if I miss you, I do apologize ahead of time. Um, it, it happens, but rarely. I will remedy it immediately. On the open mic list tonight, I have Robert F., Rachel Johnson, Generalissimo, Poetastic, Rich Boucher, Mark States uh, in the house. Uh, so if anyone else would like to perform, let me know. I will get you on the list. The uh, list is small, so let's go like up to five minutes tonight. We'll be perfectly fine. Uh, for those who are not familiar with um, my Saturday night show, when I am doing one feature, I'll usually do like about 30 minutes on the open mic, and then I'll bring up our, our main feature, our headliner tonight. And then we'll go back to the open mic list and we'll finish it out or we'll do a round two. Uh, so if you're not sure if you wanna read yet, you might wanna squeak in later, you can absolutely do that. And if we don't have uh, enough readers, we'll just do an entire round two. Uh, usually round two is off the books, which means we're not gonna be live and we're not gonna be recorded. So your ass has to be here in the Zoom room. Uh, if your ass ain't here, it don't count. And you you won't know. So get your ass here. All right. <clears throat> Couple of quick announcements for everyone. Uh, for not only the word is right, but for red or green books. Uh, so uh, next Saturday night is our poetry in a movie. The very first Saturday night every month we do poetry in a movie. We're featuring Fallen, which has John Goodman. It has uh, Denzel Washington and it has um, uh, the Sopranos actor, Someone saved my life. No, nobody. Are you referring anyways. to James Gandolfini? James Gandolfini. Got it. I did it before you said it. Rich. Yes, uh, that was on the fly because I was not. Um, thinking about it before this exact moment. But yes, uh, it is a wonderful old 1998 movie. I don't pick things that are, are usual for this era. I like to pick things that I like, but from a while ago, and it is a very good angels and demons, good and evil uh, type of movie. And we're going to be showing that. Uh, I know some people in the in this house are not fans of Denzel Washington. That's okay. You don't have to come. I'm not mentioning any, any names, but her initials are Stacey Dyson, but still Denzel, we totally welcome you to swell on our open mic. Uh, thank you. Uh, anytime you want, we welcome you. October 14th, I have Zulia Nett. Um, I'm so excited to welcome Zulia Nett uh, here. She'll be featuring October 14th. Uh, we have karaoke night the last Saturday of every month. Now, uh, the Poet Palooza is coming up. That is our annual Red or Green Books poetry event. Everyone who has published a book with Red or Green Books is invited back for a reunion, so to speak, if you will. And it grows every year. And that'll be November 18th. Uh, we're doing a special Friendsgiving here Saturday, November 25th. If And I think y'all think November's far away. No, 
It was just July and it's already damn near the end of September. It's our summer's already over. Cry. Here's the tissue cry. Hi, summer's gone, right? So uh, you think November is not just around the corner. It is. It absolutely is. Uh, we're going to be doing a special reading from American Grey Bear Calls to End Gun Violence, Saturday, December 9th. And we have our feature of the features. That is our annual event where we invite all of our features back. Rose Gold, that includes you uh, to, to read uh, in our annual anniversary show here at The Word is Right. And that is going to be Saturday, December 16th. Uh, super, super excited. So come back Saturday, December 16th. I'm hoping, I know Mark States has already signed up. I'm hoping uh, so many of our features who have, have been here this year uh, sign up to come and read. It is a 10-minute spot this year, not a five-minute spot. It is a nice 10-minute spot. So it is a really, really nice chunk of time uh, to come and get on the mic uh, tonight. All right. <clears throat> that being said, announcements out the way. Uh, we have poet Rose Gold in the house tonight, uh, a full featured set of hers. Uh, she can take anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. <clears throat> I know I always tell my poets uh, 20 minutes because we usually have two features, but Rose Gold, if you would like to take 30, you are absolutely welcome uh, to do that. <laughs> I'm scrolling back through the chat um, all about the Denzel comments. So yes, uh, now I'm catching up on, on why people were laughing. That is hilarious. Uh, yes, absolutely. Denzel can come swell on my mic anytime he wants. Um, yeah, let's go. Anyways, uh, yes, rest in peace, Summer. But the fall is here. And if the fall wasn't here, then Rose Gold wouldn't be here. And as the leaves turn to yellow, uh, we can also welcome our beautiful friend, our sister, our poet, uh, poet in arms uh, here to uh, feature at The Word is Right. All right. So I'm welcoming a few more poets as they're coming in here. Welcome Shocky G. Welcome Jane Spoken Word. If you would like to read tonight, let me know, please, so I can get you on the list and, uh, and get you going. Otherwise, that's it. I got Robert F., uh, Rachel Johnson, Generally Simo, Poetastic, Rich Boucher, and Mark States. I'm going to go ahead and kick us off uh, with a poem. I love this poem. It's so fun. Um, I originally wrote this poem for Chaz um, because, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to say he's still in my life. Yeah, he survived. Uh, so that we're super excited about that. Uh, but he told me, he said, um, don't ever tell me how to love you because I'll love you exactly the way you want to be loved. And so I wrote this poem despite that, right? Uh, here we go. So Robert F, you're on deck. Love me like a home cooked meal or a last meal because I am enough woman to fill all the empty and heal. No, not heal. Hold healing space for you to face those demons. Demon tongue in my mouth, face my face. Deep down in balls and throat that always wanted a kiss to wake it. Love me like the desert sunset. Smells of strawberries over fossilized stone mountains that soften beneath your hands. Love me, if nothing else, on purpose with ridiculous laughter. The kind that spreads from smile to smile, shaking from core a release you haven't known since childhood. Love me kind, love me dirty, love me scared, love me brave. Love me like you believe you'll never leave and make me believe it too. Love me so hard that you become my day one. Love me through hand-holding, a gentle guarding of the small of my back, an arm around my shoulder, a hand up or down or in or out. Let's just go together. Hug me so long our bodies braid themselves, a tapestry of time that will never fail us. Kiss me like you aren't afraid. Kiss me like you're on this journey too. Kiss me like we are walking the same way at the same time, at the same rate like fate didn't forget about us after all. 
kissed me like we are medicine. A cure for each other's cants, where the world is our playground and everything becomes possible. Touched me like you're penning a new poem. Like my nipples are your ink and my skin your microphone. Love me into safety where I freely kneel before you. Look up with my blue eyes. Your beautiful body wipes across my face, buries into my mouth and I let you make me yours. Love me like you are Kevlar. Love me like my words matter. Love me like I am beautiful and seen and all yours, like this was meant to be. Love me like the good outweighs the bad. Love me like my broken bits matter and you are the missing piece. Love me scared out of your mind. Love me desperate. Love me authentic. Love me like there are no second chances and it is more than just the chase. Love me, the whole woman, the curvy body shifting moves in my darkness and light. Love me when I bite and cry. Love me by letting me have my way with you. Love me by letting me leave you never the same again. Love me a slow dance humming kitchen song and at a ruckus poetry slam. Love me when I come a showery orgasm over you. And when I fall asleep in your arms. Love my hips, love my body, love my ass just as much as you love my lips, my arms, my smile, my relentless dream working. Stay, stay to love me this way. Stay so that we may learn to love each other in the best way, like poets, like people, like we are destined to do. Thank you. Let's go. Oh my God. My chair like sunk all the way down as I was reading that. My chair was like, oh, it's so good. Oh. And she just kept sinking down on my ass. All right, let's go. Uh, so yes, that poems for Chaz. All right, Robert F. You're up. Um, Rachel, you are on deck. If anyone else would like to read tonight, put your name in the chat or uh, direct message me, please. Thank you, Marissa. Um, would and I be yes, able to I'm on the screen share thing. Let me let me get the screen share thing going for you, sir. I got thank you. you. Thank you. Um, and and I want moment. to thank you for using the word app because I'm going to be sharing some uh, erotic images featuring um, the male ass. Um, so if that isn't to your liking, um, I would suggest that you um, don't look at the screen. Um, the, the first one is one that I, I did um, over a year ago. It's called uh, Man Mac of Love. It's a visual poem inter integrating uh, the male body with the, uh, the tarmac. Uh, the words are wheels lubed, roll rudder takeoff, and ETA now. Uh, this, the new series that I started working on now is called um, Range of Commitment. And this is my image for uh, monogamy. And this is the polygamy uh, image. This is a rent boy image. Another rent boy image, 15 minutes for $100. And then this is the asexual or don't touch that. And this is another um, asexual and uh, don't touch that. And I, I did want to share as um, a graphic artist that I typically uh, publish my material uh, digitally um, on the web. 
And I found, I am finding it very difficult to uh, publish erotic images. I have, I have had uh, one text piece in Horror Sleaze Trash and also two text pieces in another magazine called uh, Throats to the Sky. Um, but I'm finding that they're not helpful. If anybody has been successful with uh, publishing visual erotica, um, I, I would welcome uh, sending me a message in the chat. I think my next uh, step would be to do an art show in New York City where it, it might be more well received. But I want to thank you for letting me show uh, my new uh, series on the range of commitment and greetings from Delaware. Yes. Ah, I love how Robert Fleming is always pushing the envelope, right? If you've never thought about using a uh, visual, um, whatever is in your environment, in your work, please do. Uh, Robert, I, yes, uh, I think you should open Kinky Press or Kinky Books or do something like, just do it. Just, just do an LLC kinky books. Um, I, 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 maybe not kinky. Maybe kinky is like too. Um, maybe just like a visual. I mean, it would have to be something sexy, like um, yeah, uh, tongue, tongue, tongue tied press or something. Oh, tongue tied press. There you go. Oh. There's so many things you could do with that logo. Tongue tied press or tongue tied books. Ah, I would, yes, do that, Robert. Uh, I would, yes, um, because it absolutely is a, an avenue that. And I tongue tied myself. Uh, it is an avenue that absolutely needs to be validated. And I love it when you come on here and do that. Uh, I, yes, all of it all day long. Yes. Um, Yes. All right. We're going to keep rocking down the list. Uh, we have Rachel Johnson. We're going to go, uh, we'll probably go Rachel generally Simone Poetastic, and then we'll bring up our feature, uh, Rose Gold. And um, then we'll go back to the open mic list. I have Rich Mark Jane. Spoken word is going to read, so don't go anywhere. And Stacey Dyson is on the list. That's right. If I missed anyone, uh, let me know and I will get you. Um, I will get you on the list tonight. I don't want to miss anyone. Are you ready, Rachel? Uh, yes. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'll be reading a couple poems, and these are dedicated to my best friend, Mess, who recently passed from pancreatic cancer. Worn penny promises. I startled from a dream because of you. You smiled, tongue curled behind bold teeth. Who knew that below the enamel, your gums were barbed? That explains the metallic sting. Cold flavored promises swallowed like worn pennies. Even that I savored. I bit down, rolled the barb over my tongue and pressed it to the whalebone scaffold of my mouth, ringing false. Barbs caught in throat, their mass crept into brittle cage of ribs and tried to stifle lungs. Beneath my last defense, my sternum, gravity condenses around the bulk of your leaving. This next poem is Elegy for Shaddai, my uncle, part one, things he taught me. And I apologize if I'm a little nasal, I got um, kind of sick. So sorry for that. Part one, things he taught me, how to chop with an ax, feet planted apart and bring it down with perfect force to snap pinyon branches and crack pine logs without them ricocheting in my face. How to be reckless with a take no shit swagger and hardcore res glare behind sunglasses like him. How to stand in stirrups as his sorrel quarter horse Abbey gallops with jolting strides while my porous vertebrae complains. How to 
Hey man, suck it up and be invincible. How to savor and mourn loneliness. The lone wolf, arms wide, inviting hardship and the overwhelming sky. How to load and hold a British 303 rifle. Steadying aim with the rifle's leather strap around elbow and squeeze the trigger. The gun doesn't buck, but cloudy purple bruises will later surface on my shoulder and kiss my collarbone. How to water Che, grandfather horn toad, who lives in scraggly brush beside my great grandfather's hogan, so he will bless us with male rain. How to forget those who passed and those still living and to only take out those memories in secret. How to exchange breaths four times with my weak old bay colt, baby, to claim him and have him claim me. How to be a man and love in fragments. Part two, things he didn't teach me. How to misplay sorrow, how to drive stick shift on his gold GMC Sierra truck with classic rims like he promised, how to take to sobriety, how to clean and oil a gun, how to put aside anger so I won't hit him harder than I mean to when he laughs and cracks a joke about my slow soft punches. My right fist fires from my hip, a tight hook exploding into his left side. Aim for the floating rib, like how I practiced in the dojo with my chief grandmaster. How to live between spaces, between realities, without self-destructing. How hard it is to forget that forgetting requires endless effort, like Sisyphus's losing battle. How not to shoot a British 303 rifle while drunk and suicidal. How to live beyond nights and days, weary gestures and endure. How much a bullet weighs. Thank you. Oh my, oh my dear, please put your links in the chat for how folks can uh, find you and follow you and support you. Um, I grew up training horses, so I, I tap into a lot of that, uh, a lot of the loneliness and the reason many of us are alive who work with animals early in our lives, uh, most likely. So yes, uh, so many lines like I, I I've already filled my page like halfway with notes already and I'm gonna write some epigraphic poems um and I would love to I would love to um to 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 learn more about you and, and hear more from you so if if you feel like you would like to share your information uh and if not that's okay that's valid too but um I would love to hear more from you so please come back um, all right, uh, Generalissimo Brian Franco, uh, you're up next. Generalissimo, check your emails because I did send the emails for the feature of the features and for our Red or Green Books Poet Palooza, which I hope you do sign up for, sir, uh, because it's going to be a great time. And then after Generalissimo, we poet tastic, and then we're going to break for our feature tonight, the poet Rose Gold. Are you ready, G? Yeah, my internet's been sort of acting up, so I'm not going to be on camera. The first, I am going to share this. This is uh, a little ekphrastic piece I did in the shop this morning for Starry Night. And I'm going to pull up the poem so I can read it to you. Here we go. Hey, do you see? Do you see the painting? Yes, yes you're good. Starry night. A word from a star in Van Gogh's Starry Night. How dare the clouds interrupt our meditation sesh? How dare they cause a tidal wave in the sky? Even the moon has turned its back to them. Do they really think their temper tantrum of swirling and twirling can act as a cease and desist demand that we tone down our shine? 
as if it is at all possible. I will unshare. There we go. And the next one. Excuse me. Has no title. I did it in a uh, um, a, a workshop with Amira Shabazz from New Jersey uh, to this morning. Oh no, this I'm sorry. This was done in Tumble Words. I'm sorry, and it has no title. Please forgive me for being unforgiving," said the desert to the dying man, who knew he was imagining this voice. Who then replied to the man's silence. I regret that my landscape has become your inescapable destiny. I so badly wish I could I could will an agave to spring from my floor to, or provide a cactus with fruits and flowers and water inside, but I have damned you with days that will dehydrate your soul and night that will cause you shiver. The man wished to be found and saved while simultaneously wishing for conclusion. He asked the desert if it was, in fact, what was left of his humanness. He would wake the next morning to a gentle breeze and punishing sun. He could barely open his eyes for the pain of the dry. He felt as if his skin would peel away like crepe myrtle bark. He tried to bark at the moon, but his parched throat denied him. He instead marveled at the starry sky and counted constellations. The desert again said, forgive me for being unforgiving. The powers that be rarely allow my skies to cry. Again, the man fell asleep. When he woke to water slowly falling from the sky, he noticed not an agave or fruiting cactus, but little leaves with tiny flowers that tasted like something sweet from his childhood. Um, this I wrote in um, Diane Murray's, Diane Murray Ward's, Wednesday workshop. If you go to Art in the Basin on Facebook, you can look up her event, and it's the next two Wednesdays as well. Less than four minutes on a bus in the Bronx. There's a young man around 21 years old sitting directly behind the bus driver, intently tap dancing on his cell phone with his thumbs. Directly behind him is a man in his late 60s who spends almost every afternoon riding the bus, wearing what looks like a Kelly Green 1980s members only windbreaker. He worries the kid will ruin his ability to properly communicate because of all that constant texting. Two young women who are possibly not yet 20 are talking loudly about the boys they have both dated, including facts like penis size. Suddenly a bike messenger jumps the curb in front of the bus. The driver slams the brakes. The phone flies to the side and hits one of the loud girls in her boob. She yells, boy, I own this phone now. In less than 18 months, the older man will write a New York Times bestseller titled, What Happened During My Residency on the Columbus Avenue Line. And finally, this is called Scotch on the Rocks. The bartender dips a metal scoop into the ice machine. The ice sounds like little marbles when it lands in the glass. He sets it atop the pockmarked bar. When he pours the scotch, you hear the slight rice crispiness crackle of the ice objecting to its eventual melting. It's the top shelf stuff that you rarely get. The bartender asks if you're celebrating something. He mentions that he remembers when your dad brought you in to celebrate your first job after college, back when his now deceased uncle owned the place. He pushes the glass across the oak. It travels less than a foot before it arrives at you. You lift it to about where your chin is. You tilt it back and forth. The ice jingles. It sounds a bit like one of those collars people put on their dog when they dress it up like an elf at Christmas. You lift it till it hits your bottom lip. It smells of warm, fresh caramel, brown, buttery, sweet, and the tiniest bit bitter. Your top lip rises just enough for a sip of liquor to travel over your tongue to your taste buds and slide down your throat. A warm sensation happens for a few seconds that feels like you won an award for sighing. During this time, you closed your eyes when the scotch entered and opened them when you set the glass on the bar. You exhale through your nose before sip number two. You say to the bartender, Yes, Travis, I am celebrating, but you don't tell him what you are celebrating. 
You don't order a second drink. You leave a generous tip. He says to have a nice night and says your name. And as you are walking out, you wonder what you two would talk about if you ran into each other at a diner. Thank you. Oh, let's go. Generalissimo Pride, Franco. Woo! Woo! He also has an amazing book, Everything I Think is All in My Mind. Um, Generalissimo is part of our 2021 authors that we launched here at Red or Green Books. We're so super excited uh, for him him and his wonderful book please if you've not had a chance to get his book get it um it, yes it's just a lovely book i can't wait to see what you do next uh generalissimo it would be uh it is it's gonna be amazing i can't wait uh welcome terry rose jertson another red or green books uh author in the house welcome price is black Price, this is another uh, Word is Right host here. Very, very, very excited that the hosts are showing out tonight for Poet Rose Gold and her incredible feature, uh, including my host with the most, uh, Poetastic, Eddie Foreman is here. Uh, Eddie helps with the Poetry New Movie Night. He also helps with um, Moist Mondays. We're, we're not having Moist Mondays this coming Monday because um, uh, um, just our misdemeanor is flying in here to Albuquerque from London and she's going to be here Monday night. So I've got to pick her up from the airport and stuff, but um, otherwise, you know, we do love to do erotic stuff around, around these parts. So uh, let's go. Uh, what you got poetastic. And then, uh, then we'll break, we'll bring up our feature reader tonight, the poet Rose Gold, and then we'll go back to the open mic list. Uh, if you would like to get on the open mic list, if you're just joining us, reach out to me, let me know. And um, and I got you. All right, Potas. All right, thank you, our lovely co-host that we love the most that deserves a toast. Woo! But too man, uh, but you know she doesn't like to boast. Um. Well, my name is Ed Potastic. I'm feeling fantastic. Please take the time to enjoy my rhyme for the sublime. I got two pieces, so you know I'm gonna rhyme. My first piece is called "What is Sex?" What is sex? A bunch of images comes to mind. Is it beyond chromosomes Y and X? That's true. But are you a little behind? What is sex? Would it be better to ask a bird? Hey, can you stop flying either north or west? Is it about laying eggs or white turds? Is related to the feathers or the chest? What is sex? Would it be better to ask an octopus? You have a lot of legs. Is it about protecting, mounting, and dying? Wow, that took me down an arm or a few pegs. What is sex? Would it be better to ask a praying mantis? The female eats your head. Oh my God, that's not pleasant, sexy, or bliss. How can you look, eat, or go to bed? What is sex? Would it be better to ask a shark? Yes, you're a terrifying killing machine. It's about surviving. You kind of knock it out of the park. Come closer. Oh, you sneaky great white fiend. What is sex? Would it be better to ask a box turtle? Yeah, we're going to be here for a while. Another shell to a different portal. Yes, I see. Whatever suits your style. What is sex? Would it be better to ask a seahorse? The male's the female and the female's the male. Letting nature takes its course. That makes sense, but you look a bit pale. What is sex? Would it be better to ask the ants? I try not to crush you guys. One large colony of all no defiance. Yes, the queen comes the queen comes first, but is it about quality or size? What what is sex? Would it be better to ask an elephant? You're huge and you're huge and strong. Show off your trunk and go for a loud rant. Yes, but you're not right or wrong. What is sex? Would it be better to ask a bear? It's grizzly, but don't show teeth or claws. Well, whatever fair is fair. Yeah, it's either the jaws or the paws. What is sex? Would it be better to ask a dog? Who's a good boy? Sniff her butt and get dirt like a hog. Yes, here's a dog treat and a toy. What is sex? Would it be better to ask a cat? Are you done sleeping? Keep mowing so she knows where it's at. No, I didn't hear any noises like chirping or squeaking. What is sex? Would it be, would it be better to ask a monkey? How does it how does it feel to mate in a tree? Adapt to your surroundings. I agree. Well, whatever makes you feel boundless and free. What is sex? Would it be better to ask a bumblebee? Protect the hive at all costs. If you weren't a bee, who would you be? 
the queen, I'm not at a loss that you want to be the boss. What is sex? Would you bear to ask an alien? I know this is primitive. A scientific ritual for a species won't come to an end. Yes, I come in peace and I do want to live. What is sex? Would you bear to ask a robot? Love. Do you know what I mean? Oh no, a shell's getting extremely hot. It blew up. Hope it's just smoke or steam. What is sex? Yes, I'm asking you. Is it a romantic fling or a game of chess? Is it instinctive or the flu? Is it a flawless dance or a grotesque mess? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Thank you. All right, got a little spice. Peter, say at least go inside your crease. This is called the Naked Mile. Here I stand naked. Your soft flesh is wide open. A whispers of lustful moans into the air. Our blood is boiling over, over, and over again. There and lust leaves our bodies bare. Here I stand naked. My flame has grown to epic proportions. An ember is burning between my center. Our immense erotic sense of tantalizing devotion. Let our warm bodies shimmer and get a bit thinner. Here I stand naked. The barrel was soaked in sexual overflow. The passion starts to ignite all around. Our bodies are created a smoldering halo. Our mouths making lewd, raw, and explicit sounds. Here I stand naked. I peer into your bleak, thirsty eyes. Our tongues collect the bitter and sweet jokes. Our hungry bodies dance while our loins cries. The stimulation is coming in by the millions of votes. Here I stand naked. I gradually thrust in an up and down direction. The inner flame delivers while our legs quiver. Our bodies lost themselves in a distinctive, steamy chain reaction. We quickly dance while our bodies shiver. Here I stand naked. My hardness caresses the abyss of your soul. The groans and moans we quickly swallow. Our mouth displeasure went instantly hollow. We're burning away her doubtful inner shadows. Here I stand naked. Our lungs full of indescribable rampant energy. Harpies stuck in a harmonized, electrified awakening. Our naked flesh spread out to a deep degree. Our minds kept consciously coming, yet we couldn't stop grinning. Here I stand naked. Our chest rolled against chest and sweat rolled against sweat. Our docile collision are two sparks. The physical eclipse of our burning silhouettes are burning vibration throughout our hearts. Here I stand naked. My mask disappearing deep into your pink abyss. Our bodies float tenderly upwards, the passion of a new definition of bliss, a new feeling of euphoria we discovered. Here I stand naked, we have short breaths of air burning past our lips, our rapid hips lost in rapid synchronized movement. We're moving and moving faster than a whip, the electrifying fulfillment of improvement. Here I stand naked, we're feeling the wild bursting sensation, the feeling swirling and twirling inside our groins, our minds teleported towards a milky bleak vacation, the orgasmic pressure at least inside our loins. Here I stand naked, a deep structure ease into our domain, our whispers of burning intentions, the stimulating yet enticing crimson rain, the little acts of soft piercing interceptions. Here I stand naked, the sunshine throughout the bedroom, our bodies are exhausted from dancing. The rain and sun start to consume our tomb. There goes our midnight romance of joyfully relaxing. Thank you. Oh my God, fantastic! Let's go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I I love my co-hosts. My co-hosts. <laughs> <love you> <laughs> oh. Shit, this is so it's so much fun. Let's go. Right. Even I think uh Mark States typed it in. It, it's the where is it? Hold on. I gotta go back. Wait, maybe. This is the problem with the Chromebook. It 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 shifts my whole chat. It's either Jaws or the pause. <laughs> let's go. Uh if y'all are not sniffing buzz, I don't know. Anyways, uh let's go. <laughs> Not even Rich Boucher cracked a smile on that one. Damn it. I'm gonna worry. I'm gonna have to work harder. He's he's yes, had a very long day and it's a Saturday, but I'm really glad he's here. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not wearing my pink tie for you this evening. Well, you're very kind to even mention it. I appreciate it. I'm just um 
Mm-hmm. I'm glad to be here. And I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're here too. And I will promise not to show my underwear at all tonight. So it will be wonderful. Uh, this is a no underwear showing uh, night. <laughs> no. What Marissa is referring to, I work with the goddamn public. Uh, who I hope <laughs> die. I hope that they die. I hope that they get cancer. Uh, the customers that come to where I work are awful people who... Um, uh, touch me without my permission, which um, mm-hmm. nobody will do a that goddamn part. thing about. And um, uh, a lot of them uh, decide that um, they don't know how to operate a belt, which is very easy to operate to keep your pants where they fucking belong. Um, enough. Sorry. Carry on. You know, there's enough flashing on my Instagram page that you don't deserve to be flashed either. Just <laughs> say, you know, those who work at public service, <laughs> they, no, keep what's in your pants in your pants. I'm just saying, a public service announcement, keep what's in your pants in your pants. No one wants to see that. Um, consent is sexy, right? I'm always talking about that on my show. Consent is sexy. So Rich, uh, I'm, I'm really glad you're here and you get to, um, touch base with some incredible poets again. Rich Boucher is a wonderful feature at, during the New Mexico Poetry Festival as, as well. For those who did not, uh, come here, weren't here, stay. The features coming up are going to be amazing. And maybe, just maybe, we can talk Poet Rose Gold into doing an encore at the end of the open mic list. All right. Um, I'm so excited. I got to put my hands around Poet Rose Gold um, when she was here for the New Mexico Poetry Summit. And she's like a real human being, y'all. She, she's a real human being. Um, and, and, and I got to hold, hold her and put my arms around her. And it was like so many of us to Soto sisters, we were able to be together and put our arms around each other. It was a wonderful and lovely. Uh, and so I'm so super excited that she's, she's featuring tonight. And that you all get to know what we already experienced. Uh, and so you can find her. I'm going to read her bio. And then I will put all of her, of her uh, cash handles in the chat. Here we go. Jennifer K. Yancey, a.k.a. the Poet Rose Gold, hails from the real Gotham City, a Bronx, New York native who discovered poetry at 15 and began using it as a more creative way of communicating with the world. Coupled with her 20-year career as an Army photojournalist, thank you for your service, Poet Rosegold knew how to capture the human condition in real time through her lens and record its consciousness with her pen. She jokingly refers to her work as incendiary, redbone poetry, highlighting the injustices tarnishing the American landscape, spirituality, intimacy, self-love, black love, mental health, and past life in the military. Poet Rose Gold's voice has crossed time zones virtually and in person through podcasts and numerous community engagements, including an appearance on the Red Dot stage at TEDx Colorado Springs in 2019. Poet Rose Gold is also a member of Tesoro, a newly formed organization whose purpose is to hold safe space internationally for women. We are word warriors and do our work. Poet Rose Gold's work has been featured in several anthologies, Between a Laugh and Tear, Love Letters to Gaia, The Cuddly Family Foundation for Veteran Poetry Journal, Volume 1, and The Cuddly Family Foundation for Veterans Poetry Journal, Volume 2, Poets Speak Magazine, Issue 40, Rising Voices, Poems Towards a Social Justice Revolution. These fought, in any case, a collection of poems and short stories by veterans, and I Can't Breathe, Volume 2. Her debut poetry book, Poetry is a Love Language, but first, let me tell you something, is slated for late 2023 or 2024 release. You can find her at, on Facebook, The Poet Rose Gold, Instagram, The Poet Rose Gold. Uh, her cash app is The Rose Gold Poet, and uh, her PayPal is Poetess, P O E T E S S R G. Y'all, unmute your mics. Give it up for our featured reader tonight, the one and only, The Poet Rose Let's go to Soto. Come on, girl. Hey, now, kill it. 
Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Uh, full disclosure, I'm going to be perfectly honest with y'all. When, when I woke up this morning, I really did not want to do this. It has nothing to do with y'all, but I just really did not want to do this. But I told myself, you have until 6 p.m. Mountain Time to get it together because you're going to do it anyway. Um, yeah. So, and I also had the pleasure of seeing one of our other Tesoro sisters uh, do her feature earlier today, um, Red Medusa, all the way in the UK. So that that got me a little bit pumped. I haven't heard her spit in a long time. So that got me excited. Um, yeah, I've been writing. My pen has been busy. Uh, new piece I got for you that I'm going to share with you uh, right, out the right off the jump. I don't know if you remember Run DMC's uh, King of Rock video when they're coming into the museum and Run is like, yeah, you gotta see this place, it's crazy. It's, you know, they walk in and this, this short little white man tells them, this is a rock and roll museum. You guys don't belong in here. So if you remember it, uh, just pull it up on YouTube if you don't remember it. So I don't know if you're aware, but this, there's the, um, what is his name? Uh, well, I'm not going to say his name. It's not worth my spit. He is one of the co-founders of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And he came out with this uh, book called The Masters. And in an interview, he was asked why there weren't any Black rock and roll artists highlighted in this book or women. And he basically said that Black people and women are not articulate enough to convey what rock and roll is about. It articulate, that's the word he used. So of course, this is my response to him and it's called Master of None. Many legends are not here to cuss your slander, but their beneficiaries are. Since you will not honor them with dignity and respect, I will give their names utterance. Little Richard, Big Mama Thornton, B.B. King, Chuck Berry, Rosetta Tharp, Chubby Checker, Bo Diddley, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding, Ike Turner, whether you liked him or not, Tina Turner, Aretha Franklin, Muddy Waters, James Brown, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, Nina Simone, Marvin Gaye, Jimi Hendrix, Sly Stone, Funkadelic, The Isley Brothers, Prince, Lenny Kravitz, Living Color, Fishbone, Bad Brains. I'd forgotten more people than you will ever acknowledge. Fact remains, you are the master of none. When mediocrity speaks, it reeks of decrepit male patriarchy, farting dust to the tune of Dixieland. Like most everything else in civilization that was not invented by people who favor you, rock and roll is no exception. There are countless inductees who are the clear antithesis of what this old clown represents, one of whom has been literally shouting, fight the power since 1989. While the world's most dangerous band shed glaring light on the ills happening on the left coast, fans crowned another as the king of rock and prove that they and Aerosmith can walk this way together. Every living Hall of Fame member from the diaspora should be aware of how you came out your closet and liberated your prideful ignorance, proclaiming the tone deafness you emit with such confidence in your disbelief in the competence in the articulation of blacks and women to wax eloquence on their own sun-soaked energy. When you're really just covering up the fact that your ears aren't fine-tuned to the ancestral giftings of their tongues. Have you ever heard Prince speak verbally and through his guitar? Did you attend his Hall of Fame induction? I mean, the Prince show? If not, ask Eric Clapton and Tom Petty how that went down. You, sir, are not the master over anyone. And Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Y'all with me? Y'all all right? <laughs> okay, yep. this, this is some new spit. Well, to you, not me. Um, 
kind of tells a couple of things that I don't know, I didn't want to make to make known for a very long time, but I just put it out on paper. This is called Lion King. Silence isn't golden, but your voice is. I put people in your bloodline who realized it before you did. I knew your aura would trigger their insecurities and their jealous rancor would drain your creative energy. You hand wrote a short play in the fifth grade, began crafting poems in the 10th, but I tricked you into thinking if you don't accomplish worldly stardom by a certain age, your gift will fade. You responded by shelving the one thing that highlighted your depth. I was banking on you to carry these grudges on your back to replace love and abundance with anger and lack. Bedfellows as volatile as your ire towards your kin. You never told them that you joined Uncle Sam's ranks just to get away from them. So you clearly understood the laments of your peers' familial verses, but I wired your mind to stay yoked to your generational curses. Pledge allegiance to the Lion King while forgetting the crown placed atop your own dome. I sent broken boys that blocked your yellow brick road, fooled you into thinking not good enough felt like home. You knew you were worthy, yet I charged them to make sure you forgot your worth. To ensure you wouldn't upset the apple cart and discover the spirit housed within your petite frame possessed God-sized girth. I spun the lie that pregnancy and babies were key to a woman's happiness. Fibroids and that fibroids and endometriosis were punishment to cancel your culture and hide the fact that you've been planting seeds all around you and birthing your ancestors' wildest dreams. Your loved ones' dated ways of thinking leave you bewildered and vexed. Now some of them lie in graveyards next to dreams that died along with them. Others will soon follow. And it is my mission to see to it that you are next. I made sure you didn't fully step out into your purpose, pulling people out of the pit, hoping you'd be hesitant and doubt hearing his voice, answering your calling of service and choose fear over faith, not acknowledging that freedom is a choice. If you indeed close the book on that life, I can no longer be the author of your confusion. I cannot hold your authority hostage if you cease negotiating with terrorists and not fall prey to the underworld's delusions. I cannot comprehend that foreign language between you and your Lord, nor intercept the mustard seed you've pledged to him. But much to my chagrin, now you're up and you've grabbed your pen, sword, end. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I just want to, um, before I continue, I haven't really taken the time to thank Marissa publicly for that. That poetry summit in New Mexico was just outstanding. It, it gave me so much life. When I got back here um, and I was unpacking and throwing all my clothes in the wash, I was like, all right, cool. Where am I going next? Oh, wait a minute. My next, my next in-person thing isn't until February in San Diego. So, damn it. <laughs> so it spoiled me. It really did. Um, and I love that I had the, the pleasure of meeting Ms. Nancy and, and Priceless Black and Rich out in New Mexico. It was, it was a fun ride. So it is, it is on my calendar for next year. Trust. I haven't spit this poem in four years and something was placed in my spirit to read it for whatever reason. It's a dedication to a, a dear friend of mine that I lost back in 2018 um, in, a, in a tragic sense. And I dedicated this poem to her is entitled North Star. A sister friend of yours once described you as perfection unmatched for you lived life as melody all the elements of a superlative tune whose lyrics echoed grace. Parted lips tilted upward, gifting all with a grin that dropped precious gems of encouragement into each one of our crowns. Instantaneous was the feeling of joy that you brought to each soul that came in contact with your light. 
an encounter only a chosen few were blessed enough to experience. Joy wasn't something you pulled out the closet and put on for show. It was a lifestyle that we could all learn from. You didn't walk. Lysome and fluid was your posture. You didn't just talk. You chose dialogue over head patter chatter. You weren't simply happy. Your jubilance stirred the atmosphere. Only for that song to crescendo in chaos and smoke, that unholy September night. Please tell me why, because God has yet to give me a straight answer. Because what took place that night should only be reserved for the wicked. What did he say to you? Did he speak in those last moments? Did he tell you that your job down here was done? Despite leaving us hoping we'd wake up from this damnable, damnable nightmare that for me began 24 hours after the fact, when I found out on social media, baffled because your other friends spoke of you in disbelief, in horror, in mem memoriam, in past tense, things we shoulda, coulda, woulda said more of when you were still among us. You love to paint your timeline with images of the sunrise right up until that final day. None of us in a thousand years could possibly fathom it would be the last you'd ever cast your eyes upon because God, I guess, needed you to become his sunrise and shine across all four corners of the globe as reminder constant that your light still warms our souls. We miss you, Misha and Doozy Wilson, December 31st, 1972, September 25th, 2018. I miss you, sis. Y'all still with me? Y'all with me? You good? Taking me a drink water. We're here. We got you. We're the whole way. We stepped our ticket. We're here. <laughs> Real nice, Jen. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Awesome. Okay, I, I think I spit this one. Yeah, I spit this one um, when we were LA, when we were in LA back in August. It's called Smoke. It's 1974 or 75, and all I remember is seeing smoke. Absolutely no sound comes to mind or memory 48 years later. They said I was just staring, screaming as a frightened child would. At two or three, it wasn't my business to know that corrupt landlords painted the charred landscapes that blotted my decaying burrow with malice of forethought. So why did Nelson George inform me only months ago how thousands were displaced and neighborhoods decimated to make way for the Cross Bronx Expressway? I suppose it was to quicken white flight. All I wanted to know was, can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Took root in a new neighborhood, pressed and starched in uniforms that invited the illusion of a quality education, but we were all duped in the history department. Religion over relationships should have enhanced my mathematical skills for constantly counting the number of Hail Marys and Our Fathers for sins I don't recall committing. I just didn't want this neighborhood to start smoking like the last one did. During our cross borough migration, I missed out on another, albeit beautiful creation. Birthed at a, black, at a back to school jam, I was way too young to attend. No neighborhoods were destroyed in the making of this righteous bullhorn that called out to the rest of the borough, we are alive. And these soldiers of fortune found a paradise amidst their withering world. They called it hip hop. Not all heroes wear capes, they DJ. Both the Bronx and the Phoenix, both crossed with an X, marked for demolition. From ashes to ashes, I say, instead of refusing to succumb to the smoke, we rose up from it. Using the pyro as a decadent WWE type entrance, announcing our presence to the universe. Happy birthday, hip hop. And who? I, I had a case of FOMO last month, actually, fear of missing out because I was looking at all these 
looking at on um, social media, all these hip hop, you know, the hip hop birthday celebrations that they were having back home in the Bronx and other areas of New York. I, I, did anybody see any celebrations going on anywhere else, like in the South, out West? And, uh, okay, just in Europe, but I, I definitely felt FOMO. I don't know about you. You know, I felt like I missed out, but you no know, correction, I did. Um, <laughs> all right. This is dedicated to all those who hate their jobs. I told myself after I retired from the military, I wasn't gonna work for anyone ever again in life. I work for myself, I have my own business because I, I can't do it. I would have been I would have been fired 50 times over by now if I worked for somebody else. So here we go. It's called Just Over Broke. It's all aboard the struggle bus that always gets lost along the highway to someday I'll Going nowhere fast, riding the slow guide to inevitability like the tragic actors in those Spike Lee joints. Without even giving it thought, mechanical response to ingratitude and glass ceiling limitations, not a type of future a degree was supposed to guarantee. Nine to five is the time frame within which one ceases to breathe. Bookended by the AM caffeine jolt, manufactured energy to mask the defeat of vacated dreams, hung up on the coat rack upon arrival at the just over broke. And on the other end of the spectrum, as an epilogue to a rather forgettable day, pouring out a soothing nightcap of fermented grapes, waiting for Calgon to take them away. And and speaking of a, uh, uh, you know, broke or whatever the kid. I don't. I don't know about any of the other poets. I I don't subscribe to that whole um, starving artist mentality. I don't. I don't buy that crap. I don't play into that crap. I'm sorry. I well, I'm not sorry. I don't. You know, we're artists. You know, f you pay us. <laughs> so, <laughs> um. So yeah. Um, I wish I wish Rob Poet was on because she tagged me a couple of days ago, me and a couple other people. She issued a uh, pen is mightier than the sword writing challenge. And today I finally wrote that response. So but Marissa, is this is this recorded? Is this gonna be recorded? Yes, no, maybe. Yes, we're live on Facebook right now. I will take the video and I'll upload it to YouTube, but you can share the video on Facebook with anyone. They do not need to have a Facebook account. Okay, sweet. Okay. All right. So this is the response. A sword can only kill you once. The words a pen wrought can assault generations. The accused scribe may have given up the ghost centuries past, but still haunts your soul. The pen is finality. It holds the fate of tomorrow in its barrel. Once the rounds exit the chamber, there is no reverse. Pens up, don't shoot. Rewrite yourself to life. Blessed are those who spill ink and baptize the faithful to freedom. Spirits lifted from under the weight of scripted death. As on this day, Pen writes its own story. Pen is easier to conceal carry, quicker to draw, has the authority to both protect and serve. My bookshelf is the bigger crime scene than my kitchen drawer, such as the power of a pen. And And I know our, our, our dear brother, AJ Houston, he has um, other things going on in life and my condolences to him and his family um, during this difficult time. Um, I know when we were in New Mexico, he wanted me to spit this poem again, but I was just too dang tired. <laughs> so maybe he'll catch this you know, later on when he has more, more room to breathe. Um, he wanted me to, to redo uh, I Can't 9-11 today. Someone please fast forward to tomorrow, September 12th, because I cannot 9-11 today. Please, not again with the, this is where I was, this is what I was doing, this is how I felt. Today, I choose not to change my profile picture. 
I successfully refrained from posting a long, painful look backward into horrific scenes no cinematographer could have conjured up with the most vivid and psychotic of imaginations. Ripping the bandage off every 365 days from gaping wounds that will never realize the beauty of healing. It's a recurring Groundhog Day, returning me to a year that didn't start off right to begin with. Seven months before the Twin Towers fell, I lost my father. But six months prior to that fateful morning, I'd re-enlisted for Germany, bought myself a German for Dummies book so I could hobnob with the locals in the home of Oktoberfest. How was I to know that just six months later, I'd be yelling into the phone at my mother to turn on the TV? She had no idea what was happening up to that point. Even with seeing the horror unfold on the screen, she still needed confirmation. Hurried to the window of her 10th floor bedroom where the view to lower Manhattan was slight. The same bedroom window I used as a viewfinder growing up to get a daily glimpse of the World Trade Center. But on that day, they were, in her words, two giant smoking chimneys. Just years before, serving as a picturesque scenery from her 35th floor cubicle, the place where she and some of her colleagues would lunch at Windows of the World. And we, as a family, ascended to the 107th floor observation deck to look at the people at the Empire State Building looking back at us. Fast forward, they dressed up an unforgettable dynam dynamic sequence of terrorism by naming it Patriot Day. Meanwhile, I'm starting my mornings looking under my car for booby traps. My uniform didn't make me feel like an ambassador for democracy. The world made me paranoid. Fast forward, deployment number one. Why are we here again? Oh yes, under the banner of 9-11. Never forget that the government won't let us forget that we came here to get someone that got us because they knew they were coming for us yet said nothing it was our duty to protect our shores, but it's not their grown children that were going anywhere. Pay no attention to the man in front of the mission accomplished sign, the great and powerful Oz has spoken. Fast forward, deployment number two. Weren't we just here? My double time in Iraq surpassed my entire Deutschland assignment. I never did make it to Oktoberfest. Today, I'm once again transported to visions of camouflaged body armor, sand, up-armored vehicles, screaming sirens alerting us to incoming volleys of death. As I write this, I see the South Tower collapsing, then the North Tower. It was only supposed to be an ordinary Tuesday. Fast forward, deployment number three. The forgotten war, it seemed as Kabul took a back seat to the bombs over Baghdad. I grieve because I want my city to be restored to its original glory before a time where terrorism didn't become part of our everyday vocabulary. And I sold in cry every 11th day of the ninth month of every year. But take heart, America will still be united, at least for another few hours. I am the poet Rose Gold continue to bloom. Thank you. Oh my God, you guys, unmute your mics. Give it up for our feature reader tonight. The power is gone. Yay. Yay. Awesome, awesome work, awesome work. Yay. You bring the fire every time, Poet Rose Gold. I love you. Yeah, you do. Oh my God. Thank you. Right, Jean, right? That, that, means, that means the world coming from an OG like you. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. Oh my God, let's go. Thank you so much. Maybe, uh, maybe Rose Gold will bless us with an encore poem at the end of the open mic. We'll see. Uh, that would be amazing. Uh, because the open mic list is not stopping. Like, like we got we got so much fire on the open mic list. Oh, oh snap. Look, look. All right. So I messaged Rita's like here and here she comes. Uh, <laughs> I was like, yo, Rose Gold just she just shouts you out this poem she did. So Rita's coming in. 
Uh, so hopefully she'll be able to uh, perhaps stick around and and have uh, have some rose gold at the end. Welcome, Rita Zahir. Welcome, welcome to Soto in the house tonight. Showing up and showing out. Uh, yes, remember 9-11, but forget everything else. Um, I Yes, those who are here in Albuquerque know more uh, more than everyone else the way we feel uh, about all of that and the, and the, and the goings on here. Um, so yes, thank you so much Rose Gold for being here uh, and for featuring like this, this is exactly it, right? When you feel like you don't, you don't want to go anymore during the day. You don't, you don't have anything left to give. You're like rang out. You have nothing else to offer and you just want to stop and have some quiet and some still. And she showed up and she showed out and she gave her feature because there's people in this room who need that tonight. And that is what we do. That is why we do what we do. So thank you so much for being here. It is not lost on me. Uh, I hope it's not lost on the crowd tonight. When we don't feel like doing our thing, we do our thing anyway, right? Because someone needs to know um, that they're in the right place. And I hope each of you realize now you're in the right fucking place uh, to be. And I'm so, so honored to call you my friend, my Tesoro sister, my my peer, um, my comrade in arms. Let's go. Let's go. I'll go to the mattresses all day long. Uh, anyways, yeah, and thank you so much for your service at uh, Rose Gold. For those who serve in the military, uh, we love you, we uh, applaud you, we appreciate you, we thank you so much for the sacrifice. Uh, that is not lost on us at all. Uh, Priceless is having an issue getting back into this room. Uh, I hope he's able to get back in. He keeps trying to get back in. So Priceless, I hope you're back. All right, let's go. Uh, let's all right. So we got uh, Rich Boucher, um, who Stacey Dyson is a mild fan of. So I'm very glad Rich is here to start off the open mic list. Uh, then we have Mark States, who featured last weekend. We have Jane Spoken Word is here all the way from New York City. Jane Spoken Word is here. Then we got our fearless leader, Stacey Dyson, uh, who is, is uh, uh, the poet laureate all the way from San Diego. Uh, then we have Ms. Kennedy. We have the price is black shocky g logic and if anyone else would like to read tonight let me know i'll get you on the open mic list otherwise hopefully we could do an encore with our wonderful wonderful feature and we will uh call it a night tonight rich boucher Hi, i'm so glad you're here i'm sorry for the shitty day you had but i'm really really glad you're here well, thank you. I um I do want to uh, support your endeavors, and I think this is a good one. Um, and uh, I will also want to say thank you to Poet Rose Gold. You were great. It was lovely to meet you when you were here in Albuquerque. Um, and unsurprisingly, you gave a great feature tonight. So thank you for that. Um, perhaps resonant with the the work that you shared about. Uh, wanting to be your own boss and not having to deal with the bullshit that uh, is perpetrated on um, folks. This is, um, I'm just going to say that I mean this poem. So at the end of it, uh, don't think that it's tongue in cheek. I mean this poem. This is called Stay Alert, Watch What You Are Doing, and Use Common Sense when operating a power tool. One of my favorite tools to use is my Makita cordless power drill. It's got a lithium ion battery and it can deliver close to 500 inch pounds of torque. And this little baby can go through anything. Sheetrock, mahogany wood, one inch concrete and plate steel. It practically does all your work for you. This thing weighs less than four pounds, even with a battery attached. And it's got a top drill bit turn speed of 1600 RPM. And I got it for under a hundred bucks. Can you believe that? Theodore Willigan, age 64. The customer who had mocked me for my job. The customer who whistled for me as if I were a dog or a small child. The customer who put his hand in front of my face 
as though to dismiss me and my worth, now stared at me from the table I'd strapped him to in my basement. The smell of his old American pheromones and his old spice and his perspiration and the paints I kept around blended into a heady perfume that a smart marketing exec would have called no romance. Willigan's stupid Vietnam veteran cap shook as he roared at me in a tone of equal parts fear and defiance. You really think you'll get away with this? They'll give you the goddamn death penalty if you kill me. And why? You're doing all this because you're mad about how I talk to you? You need to get the hell over it. It's part of your job. If you don't like it, get another job. It was almost like he didn't even care how cool my new drill was. My back was to him just then. I was lost in the beauty of that little green LED light on the handle of the drill that tells you when it's got a full charge. Seeing that full charge light gave me a full charge. Have you ever felt that steamy flush in the skin when you defend yourself and you know you're right? It's like that itch in your back where your angel wings are starting to grow. It's like a night meadow full of those little green LED lights sprouting from the ground and lighting up the world. The little green LED lights telling you that you now have full power. A sparrow flew over the house just then also and sang us both a song about a glorious dame in a film noir movie, and I made a note to Netflix that epiphany later. To Netflix that hotness. To Netflix my last will and testament. As all of this pretty sanity continued on, the loose light bulb over the table I had him on swung to and fro in a silly little curve over his worthless face. It occurred to me that he looked a bit like the actor who played Baron Harkonnen in the 1984 film Dune. His resemblance to that actor made me hate him even more, even more powerfuler. And his resemblance to that actor also made me God for a little while, which, honestly, I did not mind. I turned to face him. We locked eyes then. We locked hearts, too. We almost locked dicks as well, except that he would never have been able to deserve my sex. The next thing I said to him came out so calmly, so suavely measured, that you would have sworn I was an unbelievably handsome actor like John Hamm or something. This isn't just about how you talk to me. Although believe me when I tell you that in the next several minutes, you're going to learn all about what the word sorry really means. It's also about how you talk to everyone who wears a name tag. Everyone who works in retail. Every weight person. Everyone who works in customer service. What I am about to do to you is not just for me, but for all of them. We're not laying down anymore for the way you customers treat us. Still want to mock how much I make an hour? Oh, and is there anything you would like your family to know before we begin? He sputtered out a mouthful of inadequate apology words, fast and frantic, with his gross spit flecking down on his chin like I'd just given him a facial or something the moment he saw me pull the trigger on the drill. The second he heard its perfect, beautiful, rotational, industrial whine. You know what's odd? Blood looks different when it splashes on your shirt or your hand than when it spatters on a wall. That was kind of a surprise to me. I love it. Oh my God, Rich. <laughs> Y'all were ready. I, 
I know y'all weren't ready, but now you know what we know. <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Oh my God. And Rich had, Rich had done this at uh, at a reading right before the summit too. And I was completely immersed in the entire thing. I was like, oh yeah, let's go. Uh, um, yes, uh, I absolutely love, I love it, Rich. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. You are so unique. You're not like any human being ever. I've ever met before and that makes me very happy <laughs> thank you um yeah let's go all right uh rich Boucher, thank you so much D don't forget to put your socials in the chat y'all can follow each other uh like there please uh, can you push each other up here we all rise is uh here and i realize my chrome is now lagging a little bit um all right, so real quick, I, I got to turn people in uh, before the, here, let me do, let me turn off my camera so that my Chromebook can get back on track where I want it to be. All right, um, so before... Uh, before our feature left, I, I got distracted trying to bring folks in the room who were trying to get here. Uh, don't forget, please, if, if we were in a cafe or a brewery, we would be passing around the hat and uh, we would be asking people to tip our featured reader tonight. The Poet Rose Gold uh, is sensational, absolutely amazing feature. Uh, I'll put her information again. Uh, in the chat, I put it a couple times uh, tonight. Uh, you can find her on Facebook, the the poet Rose Gold. You can find her on Instagram, the poet Rose Gold. Her cash app is the poet Rose Gold poet, and PayPal is uh, poetess G like Rose Gold. And I I say this only because uh, folks might be watching this back at a later. Time. Uh, they might be watching this live on Facebook and they might be catching this on YouTube after tonight uh, so that they, they know how to tip the feature. Uh, also, all of this information for our feature reader tonight is available on our Facebook page. So if you go to the word is right, W-R-I-T-E on Facebook, uh, go to tonight's event, uh, you will find her entire bio. You'll find all the links to everything that is her. Now, I got, hopefully the Chromebook is like, is caught up by now uh seriously like we we talk about all of us go to a lot of events and it's difficult to give a lot at every event uh and that's okay and that's valid but there were 22 people at a high point in the room there's 18 people in the room now if everyone were to do you know three dollars four dollars for our feature it would be a, an amazing tip uh, for our future reader tonight. So please, you know, the moral of the story all the time at The Word is Right is just don't do nothing. Uh, do something tonight. Um, so you know, wh whatever you got, you got a couple bucks, please tip our future tonight. Support the artists, support the arts. Uh, and if you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm not going to send the Poet Rose Gold $4. That makes me fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong, because if everyone who said that actually gave her $4, it would be a much different story for artists. We do not always have to do everything, but we should do a little bit every time. That is the concept. That is the idea. Pulling together as a community uh, so we can continue keeping the word is right going. Uh, this is a free show. You didn't pay a ticket to be here, so please forward that. Buy her a cup of coffee, buy her a gallon of gas, buy her a bouquet of flowers. Uh, you know, just don't do nothing. She's also a veteran. She's, you know, she served this country. Just don't do nothing. Do something for our feature tonight. All right. So I'm going to keep pushing, uh, pushing that as we go uh, tonight. Please tip Rose Gold. And I hope she's able to do um, some sort of... Um, some sort of awesome um, reading right before we finish tonight. All right, so the open mic list reads, <clears throat> I have Mark States, Jane Spoken Words, Stacey. Stacey Dyson, Ms. Kennedy, Shocky G, Logic, and hopefully we have an encore and Rose Gold is able to give us an encore at the end of tonight. Mr. Mark.
All right. Thank you, Marissa. And thank you, everyone. Whatever gets you through some seasons, books were my only friends. Only books would talk to me, tell me stories, and help me understand who I was and my place in this world I was growing up within. Wrapped in a cocoon of bedsheets while others played street baseball and hungered in the afternoon sun, I flipped the pages of a book and imagined a cheering crowd as I jogged around the bases and tipped my cap. Books never laughed at me for missing a pitch, never insulted me for not being tall enough or fast enough to go from first to third on an infield single. Books never told the teacher they'd rather play one player short than be forced to select me for their team. Books taught me more about baseball than any teacher or young America coach would. Books even taught me how to bunt. But unfortunately, not what to do when you get in the bunner's pose and the pitcher's response is to throw a fastball at your head. And when you belly flop to the dirt to avoid being KO'd, the catcher's response is to spit on you, step on your shoulder and threaten to kill you. And the teacher slash coach slash umpire behind home plate does nothing to stop it and well, there are some things even a book does not cover, not even a baseball book. Books got me through those seasons of being the outcast, the shunned, the don't you dare come outside times. My bedroom was hot as a boiler room in the dog days of summer. The air was stifling, and the air reminded me of how I felt inside my own body, stifled, miserable, unliked, unwanted. Being in this room all afternoon, every day, felt like a cruel and unusual solitary confinement, and even worse, imprisoned for a crime I did not commit, though some may say the facts that I exist breathe and consume planetary resources at all is a, itself the crime. Like most children, I never really understood the why, only that the why is not right. Then I read Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man. I too felt invisible, that people refused to see the real me, and in my place, they inserted figments of their own imaginations and frustrations and reason to dislike and distrust and abuse. And this discovery that I was not alone in this world, that someone could articulate what I felt inside when I had not the words to explain the whys, I knew, I just knew that from that day forward, I was going to have to fight like hell to be me, to self-define me, to make them see me, to make them recognize and acknowledge me. Being yourself is perhaps the most revolutionary act, and sometimes it is preferable to be invisible if it gets you through to the next day for the next revolutionary act. You see, baseball books, are good for dreaming. But Invisible Man is the only reason you see me today. Otherwise, I might not have seen any damn reason to continue to exist. The end. Oh man, Mark states, let's go. That I'm pleasurable to be invisible. I got that line. Well done, Mark. Uh, I am, I remain completely unsurprised. I don't know. My skill. It's one thing to get lazy now Thank and you, skip, uh, skip all this shit. So let me turn my video off so I can be heard better. Come on, Chromebook.
This is not a ringing endorsement. If you're going to ever sponsor this show, you need to do better. <laughs> it's, I press the button. It's, all right, let's go. Uh, yes, thank you, Rich. Thank you. Uh, all right, next up we have Jane Spoken Word, my Tesoro sister, all the way from uh, New York City. I miss Jane. Man, I got to get back to New York City. And then we have uh, our fearless leader, Stacey Dyson. You're on deck. Miss Kennedy, you'll be in two. Then I got Priceless, Shaki G, and Logic to round us out tonight. If I missed anyone, please. Lost Marissa. Yeah, I know my Chromebook sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Jane. I'm working really hard on having Google sponsor this show, but I need better equipment. All right. So we got Jane's spoken word followed by Stacey Dyson and Miss Kennedy, you're in too. All right. Thanks, Marissa. Thank you, poets. Uh, it's just always a pleasure to hear you spit. Always a pleasure to see everybody share themselves with the audience. Uh, I look forward to having you all come to New York City and we'll all do uh, word jamming together. So y'all are invited to New York City, just hit me up. So I'm gonna do a piece that's a little different than most of the pieces I do, but I like it. So here we go tonight. The piece is called Free Falling. Free Falling. Blinding light hurts my eyes. I have fallen, crossing into the cosmic void, fallen through silence. Flawed by pain, bittersweet, down the deep, dark, black hole of a stolen heart. Wasted in the shadow of your goodbyes, yet still longing for your touch upon my flesh. No option to exit. When I am drowning, gasping for breath, blinding light reveals no relief. I whisper in anguish into the void, only to collapse into the dark shadows of forbidden dreams. Fuck you all, my memories know who I am. Do not weep upon my death. I will erase all your scars of pain. Eradicate the lies that hide in the blinding light and bury them in the boneyard of despair. Shrouded in unforgiven thorns, burn me like a sacrifice, swamped in silent egos of tragedy. Blissful ignorance flowed through my bones. Ashes to ashes, reality flashes. Emptiness fills my eyes. Obscurity is me. PCO, thank you for having me, everybody. Thank you for listening. Oh my God, the great Jane spoken word. She said, my memories know who I am. Oh my God, let's go. Oh, right to that. There, there are so many nuggets of knowledge and experience and inspiration tonight. Please, please, please take it and run with it. Don't let it get lost in the shuffle of busy, all right? Take it and run with it. Uh, next up, we have our fearless leader, the one and only Stacy, artist Dyson is is here. If you were not here at the summit, uh, the New Mexico Poetry Summit, you miss out. I, I don't know how to say more than you miss out. Uh, and, and a lot because of this woman. Uh, she's our fifth to Soto leader. Uh, she is in, in, incredible. Uh, she's, yeah, so she's going to go ahead and, and go now. Shy, you're next. Um, I got so I got Shy, Priceless Black, Shocky G, Logic. Anyone else who wants to read, let me know. I got you. And hopefully Rose Gold will do an encore uh, for us when we Marissa, we lost you again. How is that possible? 
Damn it. I, I do not All right. know. You know what? Google, you're not sponsoring this show. We're not doing it. You don't have a machine built fast enough for me. Oh, mm, challenge mm, accepted. So anyways, I, I did this whole wonderful intro for you. You didn't hear any of it? Damn I heard it. some of it. All right. Oh, all right. I should do, you, you know what I should do? I, I, I should prioritize an introduction, introducing Stacey Dyson to oh, an open Lord mic have forum mercy. and prioritize it and be like, we, well, come die. die son. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Stacy. I got you. Don't worry. You'll be proud of me. You'll be proud. This shit makes her proud. Out. I At still got to earn my yeah. stripes. I got to earn my stripes in this in this organization. Uh, but anyways, so our, our fearless leader, Stacey Artis Dyson, poet laureate, hailing all the way from San Diego. If you were not here for the New Mexico Poetry Summit, you missed out, uh, largely because this woman right here bringing all this together. Uh, so thank you, Stacey. After Stacey, we got uh, Shy, Priceless, Shocky, and Logic. All righty then. So two new pieces. Um, for my, at some point, new book, Because the Sun Would Not Move. This is for the poet Rose Gold. Her name is Marissa Alexander. Make sure you put some respect on that name. Folks still debating over whether she had the right to participate in her own survival. She hit the ceiling because the bullet wasn't meant to hit him. She hit the ceiling because she had to hit back and couldn't take the chance of laying hands. Guns aren't the only actions that backfire. Her name is Darnella Frazier. You need to put some respect on that name. She filmed the murder heard around the world. And folks wondered why she didn't drop her camera and do something. A little black girl in this jacked up world, what was she supposed to do? Get herself hurt? or killed trying to fight back or do what she did and bear witness in the best way she could. Her name is Fannie Willis. You best lay some respect on her name. The death threats come every day now. The big stupid bad is making it his business to question every breath she takes and his followers are balanced on the edge of his lies ready to take aim. The law is supposed to convict him and protect her. She is going to prosecute. She is going to make sure liars and thieves and people who persist in trying to steal the last vestiges of the American dream pay the toll. She has been cajoled, warned, threatened. Back off before you get dead. What is she supposed to do? Abandon her promises? Black women don't do that. And we only run when there is no other way because we know you have to be alive to fight. Faith and the marshals are watching her now, but all that prayer won't stop a bullet. Her name is Simone Biles. Best lay some respect on that name. Reigning queen of the stratosphere, nobody could toy with air and movement the way she did till one day she stopped. Her light tripping needed to rest before she hurt herself, so she lay down for a minute. And the world jeered and called her soft, questioned her commitment, talked smack about how some people get spoiled and can't take the heat. What was she supposed to do? Keep risking injury to define the true nature of light and its movement? Risk injury so people could keep making money off the way she could bend time between dance steps, grit, and moves that showed the old routines the door and told them not to come back? die so y'all could keep bragging that she was our free pass to show the world what black folk can do how america is always the excellent how dare she think of herself how dare she folks tend to forget the star always knows how to spin in the heavens but the star doesn't she didn't somewhere along the way y'all need to lose that attitude Black women get to self-love, self-care, protect themselves, and you don't have to like it. 
approve or co-sign on our life decisions. Keep your second guessing and your insults to yourself. We're grown and we know how to act. And the world better be grateful for the fact that we pay such close attention and let us be, let us breathe how we're intended to. And then the second piece. Oh, mercy. Hmm. Darling, you're right. I do think you're fine. Crazy, sexy, intelligent, cool, and sugar sweet, a gentleman and scholar. I imagine in your wake why a thousand satiated hearts and satisfied bodies. I am not that kind of girl. You're going to have to step to me different because loving me is a revolutionary act. I should not need to, but I'll save you some time. Let me tell you exactly who I am. I am the girl who stuffs music into her ears because the glittering burn of words tumbling along the strands and threads of my DNA often leaves no room for other sounds. Truth is an old faithful lover. Integrity is my BFF. You can't live with them always hanging out. You best get stepping now. I feel no need, but let me tell you exactly who I am. I am the girl who breathes in flame and breathes out poetry and falling stars. Never met a fantasy I could not completely enslave. To kiss me is to discover how the light in a sapphire tastes. To know how it feels to catch errant stars laughing between your fingers. To kiss me is to celebrate every woman who ever loved. Never mind if it was at a loss. She loved and made herself a part of history. To love me, you must bring everything. Your wit, your sword, your sense, your shield, your strength. Be prepared to overthrow old patterns and awkward understanding. Tired conventions and over-familiar acknowledgments of what commitment should be. I don't need a dragon slayer. I got that shit. I need a dreams keeper. A man to handle my body can be found with any quick look and careless smile. Can you handle my visions as well as my bad dreams? I don't need you to understand me. I understand me. I don't need you to complete or save me. It's too late for that. My parents loved me enough to make me whole and Jesus saved me when I was 12. Are you getting this? You're going to have to wrap your head around, your heart around, your life around the fact that I am not that kind of girl. The ones you're used to beguiling and being beguiled by. Bring your honor and your A-game, sugar. And let's go warrior together. Change some worlds with our sharply defined, luscious, all that, and unique, ambitious, realized selves. Yeah, sugar. You should probably stretch first. Breathe deep. Because once I let you in, be in for the long haul. I am not another sweet, pleasant pastime. I am not capable of, impossible to be just another comfortably satisfied heart and gratefully satiated body. Because loving me, loving me is a revolutionary act. Oh my God. Unmute your mics, y'all. Give it up for Stacy Dyson. Good to hear. That was beautiful. That was so captivating and so penetrating. It's in my brain. <laughs> right, Shay? Oh my God. Yes. If y'all were not here, for the New Mexico Poetry Summit, you missed out on some of these incredible human beings. And Stacy stayed like the whole week after and, and was performing here locally. So if you did not hear her perform that piece for the first time, like 
Y'all missed out. I'm just saying you missed out, but you can prevent that from happening next time by making sure you're here the second weekend of September, 2024. It's already on the books. Block your schedule. Not only block your schedule, but fiercely de defend the time of that weekend. Nothing else can come into that weekend. I mean, of course, you know, we all have emergencies and shit happens, but I think sometimes, you know, we, we overbook or we don't plan well enough and you don't defend the space. So block the second weekend of September. I believe it's uh, September uh, 13th through the 15th in 2024. We're going to be back here uh, doing another incredible poetry summit. You already heard the poet Rose Gold say she's going to be here. Uh, I know Stacy's going to be here. I know Rich is going to be here. Uh, a bunch of returning poets uh, are going to be here next year. So get your ass here. We are part of the United States. We all speak English and you don't need a passport. It's fine. It's beautiful. All love. It's all love, right? All right, let's go. Sunshine is up next. Oh my God. I'm not seeing shy for a, for a hot <laughs> minute. I'm glad you're back. Beautiful. Yes. And then we got priceless Shucky G and logic to wrap us up tonight. Hello, everyone, and so glad to be back on Zoom. It's been two and a half years or so. Uh, life happened, and I'm glad to be here. I enjoyed everybody's poetry. It was beautiful. It felt so good. It was like a baptism. I loved it. <laughs> so my piece right now, if you can hear me clear, is called Reminiscing. As we're walking down Lake Charles, listening to the Louisiana jazz greats, trombone shorty, Louis Satchel's Armstrong, and the legends, your sense is like walking into a fresh summer's bath in the backwoods of the Louisiana Bayou. The sweet smell of combo prepared in Cousin Josephine's kitchen where customers would come to get a free sample of it teasingly passes by my direction. As we're holding hands, I smile reminiscing of you, lifting me off my feet up into your masculine, muscular arms. I gaze at the sexiest way the white of your teeth brings the pride and joy of your smile can make a crowd at the Saints game think they won before the game ever began. You're such a rare gentleman and a fine piece of art. Look at you with your Seersucker powder blue shirt open for the cool summer's breeze of the bayous and lakes. Sleeves and khakis rolled up your arms and legs just enough to walk through the scenic prairie byways. The look on your face you give can melt my heart, which renders my surrendering every moment of me to you. As we kiss, you held my chin delicately and tenderly leaving me with the sweet, erotic, heart pounding daydream of a moment to be imagined for our next sentimental journey. You open at the door to your, from your beautiful 1941 Studebaker Lock convertible. That automobile still speaks long time memories of us. You walk around the back flirtatiously touching the curves of the vehicle, never taking your big, dreamy bedroom eyes off of me. As I open the driver's side door, your eyes fall down upon my bosom from leaning too far over, releasing the door handle. I smile as we drive away. You take my left hand ever so gently, caressing it, gazing at the five carat diamond ring given by you from your mother for your future bride to be who became me. Anticipation, you pull me close to you while we ride with anticipation of love pumping inside my heart of our trip to the next destination. We continue. Thank you. <sighs> Let's go. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad that you're back. Po Rose Gold too. She's she's glad you're back too. Yes, let's go. Uh, feel free to drop your stuff in the chat. Poets follow each other. Um, the word is right is really uh, it's a hub of um, so many different places. It's a melting pot of greatness. I think uh, so many poets from all over the world uh, have come through our doors. We have hundreds of videos on YouTube. 
it, so if you're not, if you have not followed us on YouTube, please do so. Uh, go and and watch. I mean, there there's so there's so much. Um, please just 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 experience some of the poetry that we have we've we've been blessed to bring to bring to this platform. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Jane, for being here tonight. All right, let's keep rolling. We got Priceless Black, Shocky G, and Logic. And hopefully uh, we can talk Poet Rose Gold into doing an encore poem for us tonight. Priceless, are you still here? Yes, ma'am. Y'all, like straight up, I got to give you your roses on this. Like, all right, so Pri Price leads an open mic here the third Friday of, of the month here at, at The Word is Right. But uh, Priceless also came to New Mexico and was one of our featured readers here. Uh, he was probably, he was the poet who probably had the long, longest uh, commute to get here. So if you, uh, like, like Price... I love people who remove excuses uh, all day, every fucking day. I remove excuses from people from, from I can't to I can. I remove, that's, that's what I love to do. Priceless removed all the excuses in getting his ass to the New Mexico Poetry Summit. It took him like four days to get here. Four fucking days it took this man to get here. Y'all didn't even know. You don't. You don't even know all the other things that it took for him to get here, but he got here. And um, when when it matters to you, uh, it matters to everyone. And I know so many people were blessed and moved by his presence, by his message. Uh, Priceless does an incredible amount of work within his community. Uh, he works a lot with the youth in his community for writing and poetry and a just, there's just so much stuff, right? No, Shaki G would not have gone home because I would have flown my ass out and drug your ass back. <laughs> so, but anyways, you know, people you meet in your life, they got the grit, they got the grit and, and you know that they're in it. Like they sink their teeth in and they're done. Like, yes. Uh, so price, I, I, I stamp my ticket anywhere you go, sir. I fucking stamp my ticket. I'm on board. Uh, I'm all about it. Whatever you need. Um, because th those kinds of people are who I want to work with. I want to work with the people who make their way here. Uh, and you, you certainly uh, inspire me. So thank you for that. And then after price us, we have Shaki G who also inspires me, but we'll talk about that, which, which she's called up next. <laughs> uh, thank you, Prada. I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> um, but hey, y'all, how y'all doing? Y'all can unmute. Hey, I'm so uh, glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. Sorry, there's a stupid delay, but I'm glad you're here. Awesome. I. Hello. Oh, my phone is doing it again. Yeah, we're all here. We're here for you. Okay, Just cool. Go. <laughs> you got it. I don't know what's more painful. Being a black man in America or not knowing if my sons will grow to be black men in America ducking the stereotypes and bullets to blossom into their royalty. Why is it that this nation's cold climate forces us to choose between clothes caskets, refrigerators, or urns? When my time comes, scatter me over the Atlantic. I wanna be amongst the free. Why is over my dead body even a choice? Based off who might kill me today, how shall I dress my pen? Black tux or riot fire. I think we desensitized ourselves in order to forget the pain before March. After protest, we tend to forget what loss feels like making an easy transition from activist to crab dungeon deep in this barrel of shit we call country, holding back the progress of those ahead and keeping the ones below under poverty line all danced to the privileged barking tunes of Blue Lives Matter 
and the disloyal upbeat of an OJ's classic. They smile in your face. It's hard. Having to fight us and them at the same damn time. Difficult to look your woman and children in the eyes and tell them you will protect them knowing you might not make it home. Painful, staying on pivot with Euro shields and the effects of self-hate on your back makes shooting your shot an opportunity more like a trick. Wish more of us would tip our hats instead of clutch shots. I try not to write in broken, but no other language I've learned is capable of harnessing these pieces I've collected. Defining life through art isn't coined in one stroke. This pen comes in parts in one click, one quill, one ballpoint tip may bring life or cause the devil's hand to emerge, squeezing breath from the lines I barely had the nerve to break over. Faces of angels may appear to the right rhythm tapped against a notepad. The mazes life throws at us amazes even my worst nature, how it teaches patience in this vagrant of sound. How it lunges us into its vast ocean of circumstance beyond the deep without a second thought to think or swim, be eaten or conquer, I can remember. My mother would tell me as, I, as a child to take God with me. But I didn't know she was trying to tell me the world was after my blood. So stay covered. Didn't know whether to put him into my book bag, socks, or pocket. I just knew I would be in trouble if I lost him. Crazy how life detaches experience from knowledge. How is it so blatant that humans are so broken only to be held together by sheer will and perception, perceiving death as the worst of two evils, holding on to faith, which, but sometimes this mustard seed can't write away mountains. Sometimes it seems to be too small. These words fall from my ink in the form of pebbles, no telling what size they'll be next. Blueprints are never the same when deserts are at your fingertips, one grain of sand at a time, letter at a time, word at a time. Clocks tend to imitate our glasses when you appreciate the amount of seconds it takes to make your mind up on healing. There is no turning back. Broken is an illness best treated with super glue, persistence, and crazy faith. Evolving writing utensils into weapons on front pages when warring through tears only God can see. Graphite tips hit different when pushed by belief in oneself. Coloring in dreams form real African stars when pressure and consistent heat are involved. So truth, the truth is I cry over spilled ink. Praying the mixture is thick enough to mend these pieces, strong enough to get me through another day, pushing, pressing dream into a sure thing, reinforcing this mental cavity I brew abundance in. This has to be the truest form of manifestation, reality, giving broken a fixed sense of purpose, no matter what trial interrupts our divinity. Knowing our blood, our flesh, is sought after because everything that makes the earth rich is hidden within the confines of our light. Power of creation at our beck and call. In between these cracks, hope is screaming, welding, broken into greatness. Faith be buckling up for the ride, bracing itself for the ground shaking event, whispering in the ear of doubt. There's no such thing as a seed too small. We muster up strength to battle these demons, rebuking every attempt against our God right. Our children won't be sacrificed, won't just be another name in black and white with red all over, won't be the next generation of angry black man, fuck nigga, thug, bad bitch, dot, scapegoat, or workhorse. So I tell my children, take you with you. The world is after your blood, so stay covered. If you lose you, you'll be in trouble. Peace. Oh my God. Yes, yes. This, 
Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Go priceless. The next workshop we're doing is when my time comes. And then after that is going to be, so I tell my children, let's go. Let's go. This man, he fucking inspired me. And I hope Chrome like doesn't have, hang on. All right. This man inspires me. He inspires me so much. Uh, Priceless, you you inspire me in ways that, like, I don't ever know if you'll fully understand. But, damn it, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to prove it. I'm going to try to, like, make some shit happen. Because this man, he, he inspires me on a daily. Damn it. I'm so glad. I'm so, I'm so honored to have you part of my life. I'm going to earn that. I'm going to earn that right. I promise you. I will earn that right to be your friend. Indeed, indeed. And you have already, probably you amazing. You're amazing. The group is amazing. Word is right is amazing. Sorrow is amazing. Like, I'm glad just to be a part in, 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 in the circle of you guys, for real. And um, I appreciate to have been, I appreciate the, the, the trip <clears throat> to New Mexico. It was a beautiful event. It was all love. Uh, it was all poetry. It was all minds clicking and thinking and firing like it was. It was crazy, and um, so a lot of people are gonna have to get on board and and come to the next one. I know I'll be there for sure. You're you're so right. We we went to the top of the mountain. We went to the top of the mountain together, y'all. You don't even know. Oh my god, the top of a ten thousand foot mountain. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's profoundly moving, um, the poetry and the, and all of that and the friendship, the friendship that, uh, that has been forged, uh, in, in, in the fiery embers of that event, uh, are, are going to linger for a really long time. Uh, so thank you for being here, sir. I'm blessed to I'm blessed to have you part of my life. All right, we got Shocky G. Shocky G is, is another host here at the Word Is Right. We just love her. She's also part of Tesoro. We also uh, published her book this year in lieu of flowers with red or green books. Is it is it literally all right, y'all? Like last year, last year I said the best book you could have read was at my press. This year, the best book you could read came from my press. Uh, I firmly believe this uh, in Shockey G's book. Uh, I'm very, very excited to be nominating it for uh, poems inside of that uh, for Pushcart this year. So I'm super, super excited to have Shockey G part of part of what we're doing. Um, so if, if you did not come to New Mexico and you did not meet her in person, I don't have to tell you, get your ass fucking here next time. That's all I, I can, I can't say anything other than that, but get here next time. Uh, she sure as shit is coming back. And, and I, I'm, yeah. So Shocky, get your ass ready. Get your ass back here next year. And then after Shocky, we have logic and then we'll finish up. Hopefully Rose Gold has an encore poem for us. Uh, Shocky's book is available for purchase. It's only $15, practically free. She'll drop the links in the chat. You can find her everywhere. ShockyGPoetry.com is her email. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. You just mute yourself. That's cool. Okay. Um, price, we got to talk because I tried to see how much it was going to cost to flew you out because I need a haircut and it was too expensive. So we got to figure out how we're going to do this. <laughs> you a <are> nut. <laughs> For real. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to just do this one poem. It's called Sunday Dinner. They tell me the problem with family these days is they don't Sunday dinner like they used to. Like how you expect your soul full without soul food. We be a generation of hungry bellies and thirsty hearts. Sunday dinner could fill those spaces. Try to feed me nostalgia, say, remember those good plates, candy yams, mac and cheese and greens. But I remember Sunday dinner differently. How we spent more time swallowing our pride than good food. 
how we asked mama to pass the peas and got a heaping helping of trauma instead, sitting across from the man who took the last piece of cornbread the same way he took the last piece of your innocent last night, and how y'all letting this woman say grace when she just inhaled her demons in the upstairs bathroom. See, I remember Sunday dinners differently. Remember being fed lies and told we better clean those plates. There's children starving in Africa. Yet you traded our food stamps to feed your addiction, so ain't we starving too? Starving for affection, attention, a meal not laced with apology. They say, you better not cut your eyes or talk back, so we'd rather cut ourselves and stay silent. Stop showing up to Sunday dinners. We realized how bitter truth is, how it was mixed into everything like garlic, how the food was seasoned just right, but everyone stayed salty. The whole damn meal be toxic. We had our fill and still left empty. We can't get the taste of abuse out our mouths, so we've been coughing up triggers in public places. America got its hands wrapped around our shotgun throats, shoving Sunday dinner in our barrels like the problem with family and everything that happens in the days between Sundays. Or see, maybe, maybe I remember Sunday dinners differently. Oh, let's go, Shaggy G. Buy her book, y'all. Just buy her book. If you do anything this year, spend fifteen dollars and some shipping on getting a book to fill your soul. Like I, I, I don't, I don't know how to tell you until you know what I know. So please just trust what I know, and I'm telling you, buy her book. All right, let's go. Um. Yeah, she's amazing. Uh, Shaki also uh, leads our Out Loud podcast live the first first Sunday of every month here at The Word is Right. Uh, so if you have not uh, gone to check it out, go to the YouTube page. We have hundreds of videos up there, like hundreds, like the, there's so many. Um, and she will be doing another one come October. All right, let's go. Uh, Logic, you are up next, and then we'll bring Rose Gold if she is uh, wanting to do an encore for a final uh, poem tonight. Are you ready, Logic? I am. Ah, hi. <laughs> hi, how are you? I'm Logic from Chicago. Thank you for the spring. Down in the house. Let's go, mm -hmm. Logic. <laughs> okay. There will come a day when it is too late, and we'll wish we'd done more than we did. But we live in a world where that also could cost you, because people take more than they give. Different deaths can defeat the strongest and living sometimes ain't for the weak, but that emotional death is killing in masses and some people aren't even aware that they bleed. They lose wires and circuits that set fires on purpose and the source goes unnoticed cause the burn gets to become the focus. It's self-inflicted misery while your walls keep growing your scars are repurposed. We have got to care more about us. Not everybody that's fucked up came here fucked up. Some people's lives was really fucked up. And we look at them funny because they are sometimes on dummy, but think about it. When was the last time that he had a hug? And when was the last time she really felt love? We some judgmental mother fuckers and we only do the bare minimum unless it has to do with us but everybody living needs somebody and we think just because we have somebody we assume they have somebody but some people ain't got nobody or the people that are there with them make them feel like they nobodies that's how you get kids killing kids people doing bids Unjust cops murdering people with no fears. Kids don't care what credit is. Schools are disappearing. That's how anybody nowadays can become president because people don't really give a shit. 
It has to hit home before we decide to stop ignoring it. But by not saying nothing is just like asking for more of it. And I don't know what your struggle is, but get down to the core of it and sit there for a second and don't move. Realize that your healing has to come from you. We move too fast, knowingly choose the wrong path. We can't get to the root because we too busy with the branches. Break it off today, next week it's back like magic, but it never really left, you misbelieved it. Abstract. Now somebody told me I could be anything I want to be, but somewhere along the way, I didn't believe enough in me. I thought things would be easier, like they would flow like endless streams. But then one day I failed at something and I let that crush my dream. I didn't know at the time that that was okay as long as I did my best. And I didn't know to strive for excellence because perfection doesn't exist. And the world today is filled with ways to make you stay complacent. But believe me, you can have it all. You weren't born basic. Recreate your destiny. It can be what you make it. We gotta believe it can get better because life's too short and we wasting it. Thank you. Oh my God. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, logic. Yes. You misbelieved it. Recreate your destiny. Oh, you'd be hard you'd be hard pressed to find a single poet in this room who has not had to recreate their destiny. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you would like to share your social media, you're welcome to share it in the chat so we can find you and follow you. If not, that's okay. That's valid too. But I do hope you please come back. I would love to hear more from you. Uh, I would love to follow you. I, I, all of it. Let, all of it. Let's go. Will do. Um, thank you. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is what we've been doing at The Word is Right for the last three and a half years, right? Let's go. Nice. All right. I'm so, I'm so glad you're here, Logic. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. So let's see if the poet Rose Gold wants to grace us with an encore. Um, ah, uh, the angels just escaped my bra and the uh, the doves just came out my panties. All right. No, no, I'm just kidding. But if I didn't say that, then I would just not be seeing if Stacy was paying attention or not. Uh, so you are all welcome for that. Uh, shit. I hope Jennifer was not uh, trying to like write, do a serious piece and shit right now. If she was, then you're welcome. Uh, yes, uh, no one else is going to say it but me. Remember, please tip the feature tonight. You can find the Poet Rose Gold on, on Facebook, IG, the Poet Rose Gold. Her cash app is the Rose Gold Poet. And her PayPal is, of course, uh, I can't see because it, hang on. Well, it is the Poet Tess R G. I say this because we're live. People can't see the chat and people watch us back after the fact. They can't see the chat. So this is why I always say everything verbally. Uh, but please, uh, the Poet Rose Gold, grace us with one final piece. I didn't know that angels could come out of bras, but okay. This poem was brought to you by the letter P. Pardon this interruption. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Newsflash, our planet is in peril. Perplexed? Ponder living in a perpetual state of panic, previewed as prey, by persons who painstakingly pursued you as their favorite pastime. To them, it's a constant state of play, a simply puerile state of mind. Plainly put, their persistence pushes them to be persuaded by their perverted sense of pride. Thus, your pigmentation, a symbol of perfection, is in direct violation of articles W, H, I, T, and E. Well pelted by the media's projectile vomiting, promoting the practice of character assassination, pride pleads for them to pull you apart and peer into your soul that attempted to escape from your fetid corpse that they left hemorrhaging in the streets. Punished disproportionately in the classroom, trauma in the pre-K. Palpitations riddled the hearts of chocolate cherubs portrayed as pint-sized felons in waiting pursuant to the school to prison pipeline. So you see, all is going according to plan. 
Yesterday was the day to start practicing your Huey P. Black Panther pistol grip. Today is not the day to, to lose your religion, but to start planning insurrection and revolt and to purge patriarchy like the pussies you were plucked from at birth. The time has passed for the peacemaker. We no longer seek reconciliation from those who purloined our persons and property. Where is your passion? Did you use it all up for the pledge? Well, make a promise to your own self that you will not go quietly into the night, paralyzed into inaction by fear. Instead, quicken your pace. Pass me the mobile so we can record the furious styles of millennium revolution, pulsating at a fevered pitch. Then, pause. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, let's go and mute your mics for our feature tonight. The one and only, the poet, Rose Gold. Ah! Let's go. I mute your mics, y'all. Come on, let's go. Give it up for Jennifer Yancey, the poet Rose Gold. Oh, oh man, let's go. All right, don't forget, please tip the poet tonight. I'll put it in one more time in the chat. Uh, you don't have to do a lot, just do something. Don't do nothing. Buy a gallon of gas, buy a cup of coffee, buy a house if you're so implored to do so. <laughs> right? <laughs> just don't do nothing, right? Just don't do nothing tonight. Oh, uh, it is. What they call it? What they call you, baby? Oh, hold on. All right. I have. I, I, all right, I got legacy there. All right, so don't just don't do nothing, right? Is 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 the is is the um, moral of the story? Laurel Justice, welcome. I'm sorry you're joining a, a little late tonight, uh, but welcome, welcome to the word is right. We're glad to have you. Uh, thank you for being here. If you uh, would like to uh, give something to our feature reader tonight, please do so. Uh, this is a, a free event, and so we'd like to keep the uh, keep the wheels going and uh, continue to uh, tip our features. If you do not have PayPal, you do not have Cash App, reach out to us at The Word is Right. Uh, we have taken cash in the mail. We've taken checks in the mail. We've taken uh, money orders in the mail before and sent that on to our features. Firstborn, carrier pigeon, all that shit goes down here. Uh, Zero excuse why not to tip our feature readers. Uh, the moral is just don't do nothing. Uh, do something tonight. Uh, we were all very moved by the reading. So please just do something. Don't do nothing. All right. So I'm going to do my toast that I do every uh, Saturday night. Open mic. So grab a glass, grab a drink, grab a pretend drink. Just uh, mime your way if you want. I'm going to bless the room and bless all the people in it uh, this evening. And so thank you so much. Please come here. We have shows just about every day of the week here at The Word is Right. So if you're familiar with our schedule, please go and check us out. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. All right, here we go. Here's to health in your company and one for the lasses. Let's drink and be merry, all of our glasses. Let's drink and be merry, bad thoughts to refrain. For we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been a very Saturday open mic featuring the poet Rose Gold. I'm your host, Chris Prada. We'll see you all next time. Peace and blessings, poets. We'll see you. Have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Bye.